Hello and welcome to the QA Underground. In today's video, we will be covering part two of our series on native mobile automation testing using XUI tests and the Swift language. In part one of our series, we covered how to add XUI tests to an existing Xcode project. In part two of our series, we will cover how to create tests using the page object model testing architecture. To achieve this, we will go over the following actions. We will create the test directories, then we will create the initial XUI test script, followed by creating the base test class, then create the page class, then update the XUI test script with the page class objects that we created. Finally, we will run the XUI test. To start, let's create our directories. We'll right click add new group, then we will add test as our first group, and then we'll add another group called page objects, and finally we'll create a new group called utils. Now under our test directory, we will add a new file, select Swift, next, and then we will call this file number select tests. Hit create. And now we can create our first test. So first I'm going to change this import to XC test. Then we're going to add our class, call it number select tests. Inside here we're going to do an override funk setup. Inside that we will run super dot setup. Oh, I meant to capitalize, make sure that U is capitalized there. And then after that we will do continue after failure. equals false and finally we'll do xcui application dot launch which will launch the application oh I messed that up I need to add xc test case and I still have an error here. Oh, I see. That's supposed to be capitalized. Oh, I need to make that. Add parentheses there. And then next we're going to do override function teardown. Inside that block, we will just leave a comment out for later. And after that, we can actually write a function for our test method. So we'll do test select all buttons. And we're actually going to leave this blank for now until we have our other classes created. Now within our page objects directory, we're going to create a new file, switch file again, hit next, and we're going to call it base test. And then we'll hit create. Inside here, we're going to import XC test again. And then we're going to create our class logger. Inside there, we're going to have a function called log. We'll pass underscore m log. String. Get rid of that. And then inside our body, we'll do ns log and then 
pass in m log. This will allow us to log our actions during our test run. Next, we will create our public class, call it base test. Inside that block, we will do type alias completion equals parentheses void and we'll do let app equals xcy application let log equals logger dot log required init then we'll pass in timeout time interval set that to 10 then completion and set that to completion equals nil Inside that block, we'll do xc assert. We'll pass in root element dot wait for existence. Pass in timeout. Then we'll pass in our message. So we'll do page slash parentheses string describing self weighted but not loaded okay next we'll do completion question mark parentheses and before we move on I want to make sure that we add a log so we're gonna add log waiting slash timeout is for slash string describing self existence now we're going to create our root element so we're going to do var root element and then pass in XCY element. Inside that block, we will do a fatal error. Pass in a message. Subclass should override root element. So now we can start adding our functions for our element types. We'll start off with button. So we'll do function button, pass in underscore name string, xcy element. Within we'll simply return app.buttons and then name. Next we'll do the navigation bar and we'll follow the same principles as the one above. So we'll do function navbar underscore name string and then xui element. And within that block, we'll return app dot navigation bars and then pass in name. So I'm going to go ahead and fill in the rest of the element types here, which will all follow the same process with the only difference being the return type so that, and I'll just call that out as we go. So return for secure fields, we'll do app.secure text fields and then pass in name. Next one is text field. And we'll return app.text fields and again name. Next we have text view. And we'll 
we'll simply return app.textViews, pass in the name. Next we have text. And for text, we'll simply return app.staticText, then name. And with our base test class set up, we can now create our page class. So we're going to create a new file, Swift, next. We're going to call this page calculator page. We're going to change the import to XC test. We're going to create a public class called calculator page. We're going to extend to base test. Oh, I got to fix that. Forgot the T. And then inside that block, we're going to add our page elements. Now, to add our page elements, we're going to quickly walk through how you can get an ID for an element using the accessibility identifier. So, I'm going to open up the simulator. Then I'm going to go back to Xcode, go Xcode, open developer tools and open the accessibility inspector. Then I'm going to go and bring back up the simulator and launch our app. So how accessibility inspector works is you select this target icon, then you highlight the element that you want to identify. And then you can see here that it says label one and the type is button. So now we can use that inside of our page class to identify that element so that we can perform actions on it. To do so, we simply do lazy var, enter a name for the element, so I'm going to use one button, equals app.staticText, and then I'm going to pass in that label of one. Now with our page element defined, we can set up our test function for it. So I'm going to do at discardable result function tap one, then I'm going to pass in completion equals nil, return type of self. And then inside the body, we are going to do a log so we can say what we're doing inside the console. So we'll do log, tap the one button. Oh, I need to capitalize that self real quick. Then we need to simply perform our action on the element. So we'll do one button dot tap, which will tap the one button. And then return self to return the object. Now that we have our base test class and our page class completed, we can now finish our test method from earlier. And to do this, we can simply call our calculator page class. So we'll do that by typing calculator page dot tap one. And with that, we can save our file and go to our tests. And as you can see, we have our test search all button. We're going to simply just click this run button and that will launch the test. So built successfully. Oh, it looks like we have a fatal error. So that looks like we are not overriding something in our page class here. I can see we need to add our override. So we'll do override var root element xcy element and then return app dot static text one just to verify that the element is on the page before we begin. Then we'll save the file. And now we should be able to run it again. And we have build successful. Now it should open our app and select the one button. There we go. In today's video, we covered part two of our four part XCY test series. We covered the creation of our test directories, how to create the initial XUI script, creating the base test class and the page class, and finally updating our XUI test script with the page class objects that we created. 
Let me know if you like this style of video by hitting the like button down below. And if you are not already a subscriber to our channel but enjoy the content, I'd encourage you to hit the subscribe button on the way out. Thanks for tuning in and I will see you on the next video.